Okay, let's get into Article 210, which is branch circuits up to 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC. And you might already know the change just going off the title of the article because that's what changed. 210.1, the scope, the scope and title of the article were revised to limit its applicability. And we made similar changes throughout the NEC. So what we did here is we tried to break up the requirements for medium voltage versus lower voltages. And I, I hate to use those terms because they're not well defined. I'm going to say medium voltage is over a thousand volts. All right, so talking about AC. In the 2020 code, in Article 310 and 311, they took Article 310 and they chopped it up into two articles. All right, 310 used to be this massive article and it had 20 different tables that most people never used uh, and it was frustrating. So what they did is they took all the medium voltage stuff out of Article 310 and created a new Article 311 for the stuff over 2,000 volts. Now Article 310 is a lot more palatable. It's smaller and easier to digest for the people that don't do medium voltage. And for the people that do medium voltage, they have their own article. So they don't have to have their time wasted with us guys, right, that don't do it. So the, the, the chopping up of Article 310 into two separate articles was really successful and most people really liked that change. Well for the 2020 code what they decided to do, 2023 pardon me, what, the 20, what they decided to do in the 2023 is to take that same concept and apply it nearly throughout the entire code. So now medium voltage has its own articles, alright, so Article 210 does not cover branch circuits over a thousand volts anymore. Article 235 does. Uh, you'll also notice that Article 215 uh, for feeders is limited to 1,000 volts, and Article 230 is limited to 1,000 volts. All right, and for that matter, Article 240 for overcurrent protection is limited to 1,000 volts. So here we we're saying Article 210 provides the general requirements for branch circuits up to 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC. Awesome. Now, what's a branch circuit? Well, a branch circuit is the conductors and equipment or the conductors that begin at the last overcurrent device of the circuit and end at the outlet at the at the utilization equipment essentially so here in this photograph if this disconnect does not contain fuses then that means the branch circuit started at the panel board inside and the branch circuit extends through the disconnect to the equipment, right? Because where that liquid type flexible metal conduit meets the equipment, that is the outlet. Okay, so the switch is not the outlet. Where it ties into the utilization equipment is the outlet. Just like if you have a lighting outlet, right? Lighting outlet, the switch is not the outlet. The lighting outlet, the box in the ceiling, is the outlet. Same concept. Hardwired piece of equipment in your ceiling for the light, hardwired piece of equipment here. They both end at outlets. So, the branch circuit starts at the last breaker or fuse and ends at the outlet. If this disconnect back here had fuses in it, then that would mean that from the panel board to the disconnect, that would be a feeder circuit. And from the fuse disconnect to the outlet, that would be a branch circuit. All right, so Article 210 covers branch circuits up to 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC. There's an informational note here that tells us that part two of article 235 covers branch circuits for higher voltages. So here I've got this motor. It's a little bit uh, hard to read, but the voltage is, uh, is 6,600 volts. That's supplied by a branch circuit, right? So where are the rules for the branch circuit here? Well, not in article 210, right? We would go to article 235 for higher voltage branch circuits, circuits exceeding 1,000 volts AC, 1500 volts DC. Now that's something again that's kind of new to this version of the code but I do want to bring up that for the 2029 NEC which I know is a million years away this is kind of what we're looking at doing. We're trying to look the fact of the matter is the NEC hasn't been updated since 1937. Okay, what I mean updated. Uh, it, it's been the same format since 1937. A lot of things have changed over the last 80 years, certainly. Um, it used to be simple. You bought electricity from the utility and you used it and there you go, right? And if you had low voltage, it was either control circuits or it was telephone. Well, it's 2023. 
It ain't that simple anymore. All right. Yes, you buy power from the utility and you also generate power and send it back to the utility. So there's bi-directional power flow. We, I mean, we can even do that with vehicles now. Right. And you have energy storage and, you know, chapter six, we call it special equipment. Right. And that includes solar PV systems. Is that really special equipment anymore or is that kind of normal commonplace equipment? Right. So we're at a point where we need to reevaluate the the way the code works um you're seeing a lot more low voltage installations low voltage lighting class 2 lighting and you're also seeing a lot more medium voltage installations customer owned substations are getting more and more popular so we need to just kind of look at the nec and ask is this standard is, is this format going to continue to work is it still relevant so here's the proposed changes for the 2029 code that we're looking at uh, and I'm not going to go through this, okay? We're just going to kind of show it to you so you know what's on the agenda. This this might not pass. This isn't even had. This hasn't been formally submitted. This is just kind of what we're talking about. Is we're looking at kind of creating a new chapter one, which would be definitions and energy management and temporary installations. Chapter two, wiring and protection, which kind of looks like what chapter two already looks like. So overcurrent protection, over voltage protection, grounding and bonding circuits. Chapter three would have, you know, article 300 and the neutral conductor and, brand, oh, this is over a thousand volts. Chapter four, limited energy. So low voltage stuff, right? Enclosures, wire and cable, conduit and tubing, raceways, power and lighting systems, open wiring, devices, utilization equipment, systems, and you can see we're at chapter 13 here. We only have nine chapters right now. Over a thousand volts for equipment, hazardous classified locations, occupancies, healthcare, assembly occupancies. Right now, you know, chapter five is occupancies and we have temporary wiring. Not exactly an occupancy, is it? Hazardous locations, are those really occupancies? Mm. Chapter 17, bodies of water. It would be nice if marinas and boatyards were right next to swimming pools. Probably should be. Energy storage systems, so power sources. Those probably ought to be lumped together, right? Whether we're talking about fuel cells, generators, or PV, they all create electricity. Interconnected sources, life safety and emergency, right? So anyway, that's kind of what might be on the agenda. Eh, we'll keep an eye on it, you know, see what happens. If you, if you love that or you hate it, or you think you can improve it, right, in one direction or the other, um, reach out to NFPA. Let them know. They, they want to hear feedback. This is a big deal, right? We, we haven't restructured the code book in nearly 100 years. So when we do it, we need to do it right. So if you have strong feelings on this, uh, let your voice be heard, all right? Go to your local IAI meetings and get out there and talk to the industry experts and, and express your opinions. So anyway, there you go. We'll, uh, we'll get back to more Article 210 stuff in the next video, which is going to be GFCI protection. So you know it's going to be a big one. See you then.